First question is from Jeremy Longprey. Do you guys recommend deload weeks in between phases of your programs? If so, how often and what would you re recommend they look like? Okay, so specifically in regards to our programs. You get this a lot. Yeah, no, not unless you think you need one. But the way we designed our programs was you just yeah, you we just, thought ahead of this. Yeah, you follow it through. In fact, if you follow our if you follow multiple programs, because the, here's the ideal way, right? So let's say you're you've been listening to Mind Pump for a while, and you're very very serious about your fitness. You're you very, very trust very, we know what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're like okay, I think these guys know what they're talking about. I'm very serious about you know whatever my goal is: building muscle, burning body fat. Um, I want to I want to do like a six month run or nine months or a year or whatever. Of following their programs, you follow the programs back to back, and they're essentially designed to be able to be run that way. Now, the way you would do a deload week would be based off of feel. Well, first of all, you should I, since you just said that, and I get this question all the time. You should at, you should explain to people what that order looks like. First. Oh well, you, unless you've been with us since day one, you don't you don't probably know what that order. For is. most people listening, uh, you, you know, generally speaking, a, a great way to go through the programs would be Maps Anabolic. Um, then you would go MAPS Performance. Then you would go MAPS Aesthetic. Then if you want to go more the bodybuilding route, you could do MAPS Split. If you want to go more you know, strength. functional strength type of stuff, you can go MAPS Strong. If you want to do more powerlifting, then you can go MAPS Powerlift from this. And if you really want to you know, maintain mobility and stuff throughout the whole process, you're using something like MAPS Prime. But they've all been really designed. Like We started with like the core of what, no matter what your, your goal is, the core three is kind of like the idea of like, and a maps anabolic mass performance maps is right and then yeah. from there you can kind of take more specific paths right am i more like you said body bodybuilder ish more strongman ish yes. am i more powerlifting ish and kind of going that direction yeah. but and you won't you won't need you you pro if you're healthy your nutrition's good you're doing everything right you're following the programs as they're laid out you're not going to need to do deload weeks um but if uh, if your body's not feeling good if you're feeling run down then a deload week can actually be uh, quite um, quite advantageous. It can actually benefit you quite a bit. I think people now, if you're a hard, if you're like a really high level athlete, then the deload week can get very technical. But for most people, a deload week can be literally just you know this week I'm going to go in the gym. I'm going to go 50 percent intensity. Just yeah. go super easy. That's it. Yeah. It could be that simple. Right, or right. Or this week, I'm not going to go to the gym, and all I'm going to do is mobility, is or something. mobility and correctional exercise. Like that would be a great way to do it. Because I think some, you know, and this probably is from the I would say the powerlifting world. They tend to be at really technical with their deloads. Yeah, but they're dealing with like high level. Well, they're athletes. also the most likely to need a deload week right. too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're of all the most intense of all of all the lifting um, that I've done, when I train most like a powerlifter is when I flirt with. Uh, needing the deload week more than anything else because you're just you're lifting a heavy heavy load. There's a lot. Of, yeah, you feel it in the joints. Yeah, stress on the joint, and that's kind of if you're not following any maps programs and you're wanting to know this answer, it it's a it's a definitely it depends. It really depends on the programming or how how intense you've been training. And normally, you know, like if you and signs of that uh, fatigue. Uh, you'll see strength decrease. You know, you'll be like, "Oh my God, last week I was benching X, and now I'm only benching this." So if you're uh, decreasing in strength or achy joints, yeah. major stiffness and achy joints, those three are like the major indicators that uh, there's a good chance you could benefit from you know deloading for a week. And that deload week could be as basic as Sal's thing, where you just back off 50% of the load. 50% of the what you would be doing will reduce the intensity, probably let you recover, or if it's really bad, uh, you wouldn't hurt from doing all mobility type yeah, work. And the, I remember the first time learning of the value of a deload week, you know, I was I was uh, in my late teens and my family had planned a, a big family vacation. And up at this point, I'd been working out consistently for at least a few years and I was very obsessed with working out. <laughs> Never missed a workout. Definitely overdoing it more often than not. And we went on this vacation, and I did not have access to a gym. Right. And so it was a week. And so what I did during that week is I, you know, I tried doing some push-ups here and there and some pull-ups wherever I could, but I basically didn't work out. Um, and I remember going back to the gym on the week back when we came back to and you were stronger. And I went, I walked in, worked out, and I was, I was lifting more. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, this is crazy. I for sure I thought I'd get weaker because I didn't work out for a whole week. And that's when I started to really realize, like, okay, if I'm not allowing my body the, the, the right amount of time to rest and recover, 
then it's not going to build. It just won't. And and that's when I started to figure out, okay, this is something that might be Sometimes, hard. too, a, a deload doesn't need to be a deload week either. Sometimes it's just a few days. Yeah. Sometimes, like I, and, and this is probably something that I, th- more commonly happens with me is, you know, I do a, I do back to back workouts where I kind of overreached and I, and I knew I shouldn't have, I still did it anyways. And then, yeah, then my body goes, yep, you did. Mm. And then that to me is like, okay, I'm just going to pull back for the next two or three days. Mm. And instead of staying on this, pro, this, uh, this track of, you know, training this intense, I'm going to back off the intensity for a few days or again, focus all on mobility for a few days. So it doesn't always have to be an entire week either. It's just, it's a great thing for you to learn to do is to read and listen to the signals your body's trying to give you when you are over training and overreaching. And nobody knows better than you if you're this type of person. Like uh, we openly admit that uh, even as trainers and knowing better, uh, it's very common that we still overreach all the time, mm-hmm. still do that even though we know better. And so when you know, and when I do this, I know that I got to back off and deload a little bit. If you're that person, then uh, then you got to pay attention to those signs. You could also be the other side, which you know that I'm careful. All you, all you need is an excuse to not. Work. Yeah, yes, exactly. and so that I'm very. That's why this is a definitely a depends question because I also used to have clients that were, was looking for any excuse to not train. I think it's a lot less common that you need a deload week. I would agree. You know, what I'm saying unless yeah. you're in the space, like yeah, if you're you've been doing it forever and you've been like, yeah you. Lo- you love if you consistent. love working yeah. out and you've been training consistently for a long time, or you're in the fitness space, uh, you more likely are the people that are probably overreaching and could get a lot of yeah. benefit but, from deloading. But I would say for most people listening, if you follow our programs and you follow them one after another, yeah, you should. Yeah. You're, you'll, we, you'll be all right. We design them to be able to be run uh, concurrently in that way, and and in fact, we design them to get progressively more effective. In terms of your body's progress, so what you'll find is as you're following the programs, as you move to the next one and then move to the next one, your body's going to continue to make no. You know, that's faster a, that's a great point. This is and they, that's why we recommend an order because if let's say you are a brand new beginner and you've never lifted before and you decide to buy Maps PED, there's oh. a good chance you might need a deload after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. you know what I'm saying because that is you're way overreaching for somebody who is just getting started and you shouldn't go into a program. That's that intense, that much volume, and that's the reason why we tell everybody they should go red, green, and then black in that order is because it progressively starts to build the volume up. Mm. Then from there, all the ones that have a much higher volume, you should have adapted to the more and more volume through the course of those three programs that you can uh, yeah. you can handle we, taking on one of the We other actually programs. put those three programs in a bundle where we discounted them significantly. It's called the RGB bundle, red, green, black. That, that refers to the color of the programs because MAPS Anabolics Red, MAPS Performance is green, and then MAPS Aesthetic is black. 